It's a really interesting time. It's a lot of exciting things we get to do, see family members and friends and cousins. Um, and, and so, but here's also a thing about summer, that summer is also an interesting time because if we're not careful, summer can also be, become a time because of the busyness and vacations and activities that we lose our spiritual connection. If you're not careful with all of the traveling, with all of the vacations, with all of the trips, with all of the different things that you can do with family, hanging out with Mickey Mouse, hanging out with Shamu, hanging out at the water parks, hanging out at the beach. If you're not careful, you can lose your spiritual connection in all of that. And it can become a very dangerous thing. You can become so lazadaisical and so slothful many times during the summer months that you forget that you still need to make sure that you're doing all the spiritual discipline things in your life during the summer that you do all of the other months. That you can't put church on the back burner. You can't put fellowship on the back burner. You can't put giving on the back burner. You can't put prayer on the back burner. You can't put your Bible on the back burner. But it's still something that you need to be doing. You need to stay connected. Tell your neighbor, stay connected. So we must stay connected. Now, Jesus talks about that in this, in this passage of Scripture. He talks about being connected to the vine. Being connected to the vine and how we as believers, we, and how we need to be connected to him. And he uses it in, in such a great way how he says in verse 4, he says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in me. The word abide there also means to remain. No more can ye abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. So he's trying to tell us the importance of us as, as branches staying connected to the vine. So what I did is um, I, um, I went and got the other day. See, I, I, get, I get this one first. About a week ago, since I knew I'd be pre preaching this message, um, our crepe myrtle trees is outside, outside the church right there. I went and cut off just one branch off of the crepe myrtle trees. And this was just cut down about 10 days ago. Now, when I cut it down, there was flowers all on it. There was greenery all on it. It looked really good. It re looked really healthy. Um, for, but probably about the only thing that this is good for right now is a switch. <laughs> so, Mama if you, or Daddy, if you need this after church to take home with you, when I get through this illustration, if you need this for a switch, it is yours. Matter of fact, you can make two or three switches off of this. It would be a real good switch for somebody for you to take with you. But check this out. Some, some of y'all remember them switch days where you had to go get your own switch. And if you brought back a switch in that was too small, you had to, you know, you, had, you, you got it worse than the first. You know, it was just, it was worse the second time. But check this out. I, I took this just about 10 days ago, cut this off the crepe myrtle trees, and it's already lost all of the greenery and the flowers that was on it. Now, if you was to go out, when you go outside the day after church, and you're going to go out there, you're going to see on most of the crepe myrtle trees that are outside the perimeter in the front that they have beautiful pink flowers or purple flowers or blue flowers on them that is still on them. Why is there flower still on them? Because it's connected to the root of the tree. It's connected to the root of the tree. It has not been disconnected. But the moment that I cut off this, this branch, the moment I cut off this this branch from the crepe myrtle tree that I cut it off of, it immediately started losing life. Because it was disconnected, it started losing life, and no longer it was getting the nutrients that it, that it should be getting, or the vitamins that it should be getting. Why? Because it's no longer connected to the source. Now what is it God is saying to us? God is saying to you, that during these summer months, and, and I'm almost already finished, during these summer months, what God is saying to you is you need to make sure that you don't get so much into the summer stuff, 
the, all of the great stuff that we plan, all of the great stuff that we do, all of the vacation stuff, all of the traveling stuff, and you forget to stay connected to the source. Because if you're not careful, you're going to look up one day and you're going to be done start withering all of the stuff on you uh, that, that should be in your life spiritually is no longer going to be there because you've disconnected yourself from the source. But God is saying to you, whatever you do, you need to stay connected. I wish I had a church in here. You need to stay connected. Now, now, now you're saying, Pastor, we can't go on no trips. We can't go on no vacations. We can't go on no family. No, I'm not saying that. I am not saying that at all. But what I am saying to you is that if you do go on a vacation, if you do go on a trip, if you do go on a family reunion somewhere, you need to stay connected to God. You, you, if you can't get to church, you need to, get, you need to get online. You need to be watching church. You need to be giving. You need to be connecting with God in some type of way. You need to stay connected to God, even when you go on vacation, because one thing you definitely need to keep in mind is this, is that just because you go on vacation doesn't mean the devil doesn't go on vacation. See, because I've seen a lot of times where people, they go on vacations and then they need a vacation from the vacation because when they went on the vacation, they just let the devil just have his way. I mean, you, you, you got to be careful because some vacations can turn, can turn into nightmares if you're not careful. So even while you go on vacation, you need, to, you need to make sure you're connected to God. You're connected to the source. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing without me. You can't do a thing. You got to stay connected to God because if you're not careful, you can say, oh, I'm going to take this little break from God. And before you know it, you don't even know how to find yourself back to God. You got to stay connected. You know, I, I, see, I see a lot of times where, where people, you know, and, you know, they, they just, they just want to just chill all the time. And that's dangerous. Like, life is not just about chilling. You got to keep a connection with God. Amen. So I cut that down 10 days ago. This one, I just, I just cut this one down last night. I cut this one down last night. And it's already, you, you probably can't see it because you're a little bit farther away, but it's already starting to lose life. The leaves are already starting to crinkle. The leaves are already starting to get a little hard and a little crunchy. And I just cut this down. I, I told my wife about 10.30 last night, I said, I need to go to the church. I need to cut off a limb. That was just a little over, t a little over 12 hours ago, about 14 hours ago. And it's already starting to lose life. There's some of the flowers that already started falling off. I mean, it's, it's, it's just losing its nutrients, all simply because it's not connected to the source. You must stay connected to the source. You must stay connected to the source. L listen to this verse. Look at it in your own Bible because it's not, it's not going to come up on the screen. Verse 4, I want you to see this again. There, there, there's a common denominator word throughout verse 4 and verse 5 that you really need to get. He says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me. Let me just ask you real quick. What is the common denominator I've read already in those verses? Abide. The word abide again, it means to remain. It means to remain. It means that no matter what comes and goes in your life, no matter what comes your way, no matter what storm comes, no matter what trial comes, you make it up in your mind that you're going to stay right there. You're going to stay right there. I don't care what comes your way. You're going to keep your connection to God. I don't care what hardship comes. I don't care what trial comes. I don't care what person walks out of your life. I don't care what person stabs you in the back. I don't care what person just treats you the wrong way. I don't care what happens with your job situation or your health situation, with your financial situation, whatever. You make it up in your mind that you're going to abide in Jesus. That means you remain. That means you remain no matter what. And one of the things I want to do for you as a pastor is I want, to, I, want to, I want to teach you in such a way and preach to you in such a way and help you in such a way that when you go through stuff that you're still able to be standing after all of the smoke is cleared, after you've gone through everything you got to go through, you're still connected to God. 
You lost your job, but you're still connected to God. They repoed your car, but you're still connected to God. You lost your house, but you're still connected to God. You got to get a connection that's real deep. You got to get a real connection that's really solid. You don't want something that when you lose stuff, you lose your relationship. You want to continue to stay solid in your relationship with God no matter what happens in your life. Abide in me. Abide in me. Remain in me. God wants us to remain in him. He, does, he, doesn't want, he doesn't want us to look like a little switch after so while, after some time, where we're dried all up. But he wants us to keep that connection. He wants us to keep that connection. How do we stay connected? Of course, we stay connected through things like prayer. We stay, we stay connected through things like fellowship. We stay connected through things like staying in the word of God. We stay connected through things like serving. We want to stay connected. Now, let me help you out with something, too, as well. Is you want to be careful of things that can ruin your connections. You want to be careful of things that can ruin your connections. You want to be careful of people that can ruin your connections. You want to be careful that you, you, want to be careful that you don't become so busy that it ruins some of your connections. Because sometimes the enemy can get you so busy that it just causes you to lose your connection with God. The Bible talks about, talks about in this same passage of scripture how when we lose our connection with God that we can wither and, and, and fade away. That's what can happen in our relationship with God. But we want to stay serving. We want to stay fellowshipping with the people of God. We want to stay in prayer, stay in worship, and stay in praise. Because the consequences of not abiding and remaining in him can be so disastrous. Can be so disastrous. He says, if, he says, for without me, you can do nothing. God wants us to abide in him. Tell your neighbor, God wants you to abide in him. We must stay connected to the power source. So what is it, what is it that you're saying, Pastor? What is it that you're saying? And, I, and, I, and I'm going to be done right here. What is it that you're saying and as we start off this whole summer vibe series? As we go into the summer, as we go into these summer months, as we go into these summer weeks, God is saying to us, y'all, no, no matter what happens th throughout the summer, vacations, trips, hanging out, parties, family reunions, you name it, whatever happens, you better make sure you stay connected to the source. Stay connected to God. Now, let me also help you out with something. If you don't lost your connection with God, this is your day and this is your moment to get your connection back. God wants you to be connected to him because without him, we can do nothing. God wants us to bear fruit everywhere we go. God just wants us to be just a bunch of fruity people everywhere we go. When we go to the grocery store, when we go to the mall, when we go to different homes, when we go to work, God wants us to be so fruity. And the only way we can be fruity, what I mean by fruity is fruity like the like Galatians, the fifth chapter, where we got love overflowing, where we got peace overflowing, where we got joy overflowing. And the only way we can have that is that we're connected to the power source. Stay connected. Stay connected. And he said that we must abide in him. Abiding is, abiding is, is connecting and staying and remaining in him. That's what God wants. That's what God wants. So real, again, real quick, Last thing for your hearts and minds today is this, is that we must stay connected. Amen? Stay connected. Listen, stand to your feet. I want to pray. I want to pray. Nothing deep, nothing, nothing really major today, but just real simple. God wants us to stay connected. And even today, if you've lost your connection, if, if, You've gone from, from this, and you're, and you're starting to see that your life is becoming like this. You need to get your connection back. You need to get your connection back. And th this is not a religious thing. This is not a churchy thing. This is not to put on some facade or mask. You know where you are with your connection with God. You know where you are with your connection with God. And so even today, 
even, even today, if you're already, even if you're already saved, but you're saying, you know, I just, I just really just need to get my connection right. I need, I need to make sure that I'm connected properly with God. You know, I, um, I, um, and I'm sure some of y'all, you've had this experience before in your life too. This is, this is real deep. This is, this is real deep right here. The other, the other morning, you'll be able to testify probably this too as well. I woke up. I had my phone connected to um, my power plug. And I had the, the idea that when I woke up that my phone was going to be at 100%. But when I looked at my phone, my phone was dead. Why was it dead? Because the other end of it wasn't plugged in into the socket. Any of y'all, you ever had that? You, you, you like, man, is my cord broke? Is, what, what is wrong? Is, 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 the, is the socket not on? Is, is, the, is the breaker bad or something? What's going on? But, but I just found out it was something simple. I wasn't plugged in on the other side. As it is in the physical, the same, the same way it is in the spiritual. Sometimes you need to check and see if you're plugged in on the other side. You need to check, am I plugged in on the other side? Nothing wrong with the phone, nothing wrong with the cord, nothing wrong with the, with the power block. It just wasn't plugged in. You got to stay connected. You got to be plugged in. You can't get no power if you ain't plugged in. So even today, if, if you need a reconnection, I want to pray for you. I want to I pray for anybody in here in this room today who might, who might be saying, well, Pastor, you know, I'm saved, I'm good, but I just, I just want to reconnect with God. If that's you, I, I, want, I want to pray with you and, and um, ask you to come to this altar and pray that God gives you a fresh connection with him and, um, and, that, you, and that you, the power, the, 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 the joy, the love, whatever you, whatever you need, you know what you need. You, if, if, you see, if you see that spiritually, you know, you look and, and you know, you get, you, get that, you get that little warning on your phone that, hey, you're up under 20%. Then you get that other warning, you're up under 10%. And then you get up under 5% and then it tells you, hey, do you want to go into power save mode? The, the bad part is that when you get too low sometimes and the phone shuts off and then when you get in an emergency and you need to use it, you can't use it. I don't want you to be at that point. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you some. I'm gonna give someone else. Maybe, maybe, maybe you, you know where you are with God. You ain't totally backslidden, but you're on your way there. You, you you ain't totally walked away from God, but you're getting close. You're losing that sensitivity that you know you need to have. You know what you you know where you need to be at. And and this is this. We're family, y'all. Nobody's not judging nobody. I don't care if you got a title. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. We just want to be right with God. We want our connections right with God. I don't know about y'all. I want my connection right. I want your connection right. I'm going to give you an opportunity. But I'm, I'm going to wait 30 more seconds. I don't, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to give 30, 30 more seconds. I'm going to give you an opportunity. You know where you need to be at with your connection with God. I'm giving you that opportunity today. I'm giving that opportunity today. You don't, you don't need another revival. You don't need another conference. You don't, you don't need another meeting. You, this is your moment right here. This is your moment right here. Some of you young people, you, don't, you, you haven't prayed since the last time you was in trouble. You haven't prayed. Some of you older people, you haven't prayed until, you don't pray until you get broke. What kind of relationship is that? I want to make sure you have a bona fide connection with God. Bona fide connection. I want your testimony to be right. I want your example to be right. You can't be saying you're a Christian, but you're exemplifying a whole nother lifestyle. You guys that are at this altar, I want you to lift your hands. I want to pray for you. You're up here because you want to reconnect and you just want to be plugged back into the power source. I'm just praying for a fresh touch of God for your lives. 
God, I thank you now for these men and women that are here. I thank you, God. I thank you for an opportunity for us to reconnect with you. Thank you, God, for helping us to be what you called us to be. I pray for these men and women, God, that you restore the joy back into their lives, God. You said in your word, God, that you can restore the joy of our salvation back to us, God. And I pray, God, that you restore the joy of salvation back into their hearts, God. I pray, God, that you give them a praying spirit like never before. I pray, God, that you give them a worshiping spirit like never before, that they'll have a hunger for you like never before, God, that they'll thirst for you like never before, God, that you'll give them a sensitivity for you like never before, God, that they'll hear your voice and know your voice like never before, God. Oh, God, we'll search after you, God, with our whole hearts, God. As the deer panted after the water brook, so panted our soul after thee, oh God. Oh God, that they'll wake up early in the morning crying your name, God. That they'll wake up in the morning, God, with heaven on their mind, God. That they'll wake up in the morning, God, wanting more of you, God. I thank you, God, now, God. Keep them connected to you, God, so that we can bear the fruit that you called us to bear, God. Keep them connected to you, God, so that they can walk in the power that you desire for them to walk in, God. Oh, we thank you, God, now for what you're doing in their lives, God. We thank you for what you're doing in their hearts, God. We thank you for what you're doing in their souls, God. God, take their love life for you, God, to another level today, God. Cause them to fall in love with you all over again, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you, God, now for the love, the renewing love, God, the hot, fiery love, God, that they'll have for you, God. For, from this day forward. We thank you, God, now for what you're doing. We thank you and praise you for what you're going to do in their hearts, God. We love you. We bless you. God, you said in your word, God, without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we can do nothing. God, we don't want to leave this place without you. We don't want to leave this place without you. We don't want to leave this place without you. We don't want to leave this place without you, God. We don't want to leave this place without you, God. God, we want you from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. God, we want you. Don't let us dry up, God, like the branch with no life. Don't let us lose, God, what you put in us, God. Don't let us lose what you put on us, God. We want to stay fresh for you. We bless you. We honor you. We give your name glory for a fresh connection. For a fresh connection. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, bless God. You got a new connection. He is jealous for me. Listen, listen, listen. Before you be seated, before you leave, I want to I just tell you something. Real simple. Stay connected. Amen. Stay connected. Amen. Stay connected. Stay connected. That ain't deep, but it's, that's it. Stay connected to God. Come on, let's give God praise all over this room. <laughs>